Comic Book Savant, episode 476. Welcome back to the Comic Book Savant podcast. I'm your host, James Harris. This episode, we're going to be doing another countdown episode. This episode, we're going to be talking about power couples. Uh, this one I got uh, as a recommendation, another recommendation from my wife. Uh, it's been funny. She's been uh, giving me a lot of good ideas lately for episodes. Uh, I've been like planning out so much content in advance, and she's been giving me like just a lot of fun I- uh, ideas for episodes, um, kind of incorporated with episodes you you guys have given me. And I like mixing them in with stuff that I already work up and work out. Uh, in my head so it gives it a good variety so I don't get caught in too much of a rut of stuff I normally do I mix in some real fun stuff that she gives me suggestions of um, and you guys post on um, that get that might email me or we'll post something on the um, on the Facebook group over on the Savant Society Facebook group um, I do and, and like taking those ideas and incorporating them into episodes. So I thought this would be a fun countdown episode. Plus, with everybody being in quarantine, we're, um, a lot of you guys have been asking for different recommendations. So I, I like doing these countdown episodes. And then uh, in the uh, listing of the episode, if you go uh, to uh, comicbooksavant.com, in the episode posting for the episode, I'll have some links to recommended books. Uh, I did that for uh, the last few countdown episodes I did, and I also did it for um, the um, recommended reading list. So if you just listen to the podcast and you get it to your podcatcher, make sure you go down to the actual uh, website because I'll have um, links, affiliate links. So if you click on them and you buy anything I suggest, I get a little kickback and it's become a real little kickback uh currently with changes Amazon have been made, but every little bit helps. It helps the show and it gets you, um, those recommendations will send you to some stuff that if you don't have already, that'll be some good recommended stuff for you to pick up and read during this time that we're in quarantine. And we don't know how much longer we're going to be in this state. Um, you know, some things going in place saying that we might come out of this sooner than later. But it still remains to be seen. I know just personally with family, as well as a lot of close friends of mine, they've really been hit hard by uh, by the virus. Um, It's hitting more and more close to the home. Uh, So it's a a whole thing. So, you know, I was you know, if you just listen to the news, you might think we might be um, over it sooner than later. But just from real life, what I'm hearing from so many of my friends and even within my own family, um, we're going to be far from over for this. This is not getting as we're not getting over it as well as they might make it appear on the news by just all the accountings I'm having from people close to me and their extended families and my own within my own family. So I know what's really real and uh, this might linger on for a little bit longer. So at least I can give you some good recommendations on stuff to read in the in-between time. Uh, With that being said, let's jump into the list. This is in no particular order, but just some of my favorite power couples and I have some of you guys recommendations that um, I want to ask the question in the Savant Society Facebook group um, if you haven't joined it already and you listen and you want to participate um, it is just simply facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the Savant Society all one word when you put in your request to join the group as soon as I see it I'll approve it you come in um, we'll introduce you and just start talking we do a lot of fun conversations people post recommendations news stories um i post polls and stuff like that i interact with the group far as things and recommendations that you know um on episodes that um like this you know i asked i asked the question what are some of your favorite power couples and i got a couple of recommendations that didn't already overlap with stuff i thought that i've added to the list for this episode so i like to interact a lot through the facebook group um, so I think we were um, 44, 45 members deep at this point, trying to get, you know, as many of you guys as possible to interact since a lot of people are, you know, um, quarantined at home now. Um, you know, the conversation keeps uh, pretty steady there in the group. So fun place to come hang out if you want to talk comics with some friends and get to know some cool people. So check that out if you have, a t- have time. So first on my list, again, no particular order, power couple that first came to mind is Rogue and Gambit, one of my favorite couples in, in all the Marvel comics for sure. 
uh, quintessential X-Men couple. I love Rogue as a character. I always thought uh, Gambit was a cool character. They're dynamic. Um, I really loved uh, Scott Labdell's run in the early 2000s and uh, the X-Men books when the X-Men were in outer space and was a weird love triangle between Rogue Gambit and that clone of Magneto, which was what Joseph, I think his name was. Uh, I thought it was really unique. I really got into, I was always into the characters individually, but I was kind of iffy on their relationship. But that run when they were in space really sold me on the characters together. Um, I know they had a sale not too long ago on Comixology uh, because they had a Gambit Rogue series. Then we know um, that they got married in, in, in the comics and they have. Um, I can't remember, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. X, I think, is the follow-up series. So it's too many series. I bought all the, I bought both, and I want to read them because I haven't been keeping too current with X-Men as of late, but I know I heard the stories when it was in the news once they got married, so I picked that up. So I definitely um, have, you know, plan to read read up on them soon, but always enjoyed their dynamic as a couple. Next for me is Black Canary and Green Arrow, one of the quintessential cornerstone uh power couples in the dc universe um less so more currently because they've you know they've changed some stuff around um between rebirth the new 52 and all that but before that quintessential power couple that you would think of when you thought of dc comics and characters uh next i would have to go with scott summers and jean gray um you know or you can even say scott summers and uh uh what's her name emma frost um, I I picked Scott Summers and Jean Grey because again it's the quintessential um, Marvel mutant couple. They're the the first, the longest lasting um, couple. Um, they're kind of like peanut butter and jelly. They just go well together. Two great tastes that go well together. Works in the comics. I think at times they were overexposed and it was just like too much, and they tied so much into. The, their legacy, their marriage, their potential kids, their different versions from alternate realities and future and stuff like that, that it got kind of tired. And I think a lot of people tired of it. And that's why they did the, the curveball of um, him getting with Emma Frost later and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but um, I dig them as a couple. I loved um, Louis Simonson, Louis and Walter Simonson's run, the original run on X Factor. When that book first started years ago in the 80s, um, when the original X-Men came back together to form X-Factor and their interactions in that group really dug that. Um, so that's, you know, and even the X-Men books before that, but really during that run really um, did it for me far as solidifying them as, you know, in my childhood as one of those couples that you go back to. Uh, next on my list, I have Oracle and um nightwing or barbara gordon and nightwing uh and dick grayson uh so much has changed with those characters characters via like rebirth they they had barbara regain her her ability to walk and she's no longer oracle she went back to being batgirl and then i you know it's that whole nightwing uh and rick what is it rick race grayson rick grayson I, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it. I feel a certain kind of way because Nightwing is my favorite character of all time. I feel all kind of ways about that. But we ain't going to talk about that right now. But if you go back and read the original Birds of Prey series and the original Nightwing series, both actually written in the beginning by Chuck Dixon, um, it really explores the relationship between Oracle and Nightwing. They even had a crossover event, the crossover with both books, which was called The Hunt for Oracle which I believe is in trade, which you will see in the posting on this episode when I, when by the time you see this episode, if you go to comicbooksavant.com for this episode posting, I'll have like the quintessential stories. I'll have a uh, recommended reading list, affiliate list in the posting that you can find all this stuff. But it is actually a trade of that crossover um, out, if I remember correctly. I don't know if it's a bird's prey trade or a night wing trade, or I'll link, um, links to either, both trades if it is not one but it's uh two separate ones for birds of prey and nightwing either way i'll have it linked and the uh in the in the posting for this episode on the website um let's see uh big barda and mr miracle 
Uh, even though I wasn't a huge fan of the series, the uh, Mr. Miracle series by Tom King and um, what's the artist's name? I'm seeing him in my I just Mitch Gerard's. Uh, that series was OK. I didn't love it as much as some people did. Um, but one thing I did love is the the um, the writing and the characterization of the relationship they shared. That was to me the shining part of the whole mini series or maxi series, whatever it's called. I think it was like twelve issues, um, but, uh, but it was I really loved the way that was portrayed in that that story. So that's definitely uh, one to pick up if you want to see what I'm talking about. And it just shows how great they are as a couple and how they balance each other out so well. So that's a good story um, if you want to see a display of why that relationship is so cool. And what makes them a power couple? Read that Tom King, Mr. Miracle uh, book for anything else, just for to show how real um, that relationship is and what truly makes them a power couple. Um, what I feel like one of the most underrated power couples in the DC uh, universe, actually. Uh, next, I had to put Huntress in the question down. What was it? Was an episode of Justice League Unlimited where it was like a double date? It was the question and and um uh and the huntress and then it was like black can it was a black canary and green arrow something like that but it was a it was a cool episode I can't remember what the name of it was but it was like a double date episode they go to Gotham I think and they fight uh, roulette if I remember um and you can also. What is it? Uh, it's a mini series which is escaping me. Uh, with the Huntress in a question that came out in the comics, and I can't remember the name of it, so I'm gonna just say, when you look at this posting, I'll have it linked there because I have to look it up. A Cry for Blood is was popping in my head, but I think Cry for Blood was the Huntress Batman crossover that was a five or six issue mini series. I don't know how I can regurgitate this stuff off the top of my head by just memory, but I just did. But I don't think that's the one I'm talking about. But again, I will re, um, refer the proper one in the posting uh, under recommended reading. So don't worry about it. I got you. Uh, next on the list is another pairing of the question. But this time, this is the question Renee Montoya and Batwoman um, if you want to really see this relationship illustrated extremely well, read the original 52 um, biweekly series that came out many years ago. Um, I know it's collected in many forms. I think it was uh, four 25 issue trades and it was collected in those four. And then I think it's another updated version that came out that you can get that were two trades that collected everything within those two two trades instead of the four. Either way, I'll have it all linked down below in the posting of this episode. So I got you on that. Don't worry about it. Um, it was a big thing at the time because, again, it was a uh, uh, lesbian relationship. It was illustrated. They were introducing or um, this was a, during 52. They were going through. Renee Montoya's journey from being a police officer, taking over the mantle of the, the question. At that same time, they were reintroducing Batwoman into the DC universe at this time during 52. And it's a great story that expands over the whole 52 issues. Uh, so you would definitely have to read that series. It's one of the main storylines that run through the whole series, which is outstanding and worth a read. If you've never read 52 before, that's like a must bucket bucket list must read series so definitely um cop that um next power couple on my list is scarlet witch in the vision um i was so hype about one division um we've seen so many iterations of the relationship um on the on in the comics we, we've seen it grow in the mcu on the big screen then we got the disney plus show that was supposed to be coming before the end of this year don't know with the pandemic going on and so many shows they were recording they you know they were in production shooting episodes and that was halted because of the pandemic so i don't know when and how that's going to shape up for when the show is going to launch because they had just announced right before all this hit that we were going to get it this year by the uh, year's end 
Now, we don't know when those shows are going to come out, and, and they've already reshuffled the movies, but they haven't said where the different Disney Plus shows are going to be at because multiple shows were in different points of production. They were already filming episodes but weren't done filming. They were almost done filming with the Falcon Winter Soldiers um, show. So it's a bunch of craziness going on. So it's going to be a while before we know how it all shapes out. But I was looking so forward to the WandaVision show because it was going to play off a lot of stuff that we saw in the mid-80s with the West Coast Avengers and Scarlet the Witch and the Vision's relationship. And again... This was going to tie directly in to the MCU and what we've seen in the Avengers movies um, and Captain America Civil War as far as the building of their um, their relationship and their romance that we saw play out in Avengers uh, uh, what is it? Infinity War and uh, Endgame as well. Uh, so yeah i was hype about that this one was um this was one i thought of but also this was uh submitted by paul beverly as well from the savant society facebook group so shout out to paul for the recommendation which again we great minds think alike we both came up with this one uh good looking out quintessential another low-key one i would say with rogue and gambit per se for marvel is you don't hear talked about as much but it is a power couple most definitely um in the Marvel Universe. Next on the list for a power couple, we have Kachu and Francine from Strangers in Paradise. This was submitted by my homeboy, Ed Moore. Um, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you on a quick story. Um, I had the whole Strangers in Paradise uh, book all through. Like uh, They had um, uh, like deluxe editions, like a box set or whatever, and I bought it. I think I bought it a couple of times. This was this was back when I still had physical comics and it was highly recommended to me. And I love Terry Moore's um, artwork, art style. And, and I heard this was an epic, you know, uh, series, one of those bucket list must read type things that you, you got to read. I bought it. My girlfriend at the time, actually, that didn't read comic books, found it interesting, loved the artwork. She read the whole thing, raved about it never got back around to it to read it i ended up getting rid of my my comic collection um sold all of them and never read one page of it but she was she told me bits and pieces of it and i wasn't even thinking about this about power couples but everybody talks about their relationship and how it plays course this whole series and it's a wonderful series which i want to because it triggered me based on how highly everyone spoke of it and the books he did after this um, he did a few books. One was like a, uh, like a horror style book. And he did a couple of series and I bought all of them just on the strength of all the good things I heard, but I never went back to strangers in paradise or read that. And I read some of the other stuff he did and I liked it and bought those whole series because they were shorter series compared to how long, uh, strangers in paradise was published and ran. Um, but I need to really read this and thank you, Ed, for suggesting it are recommending them as a power couple because then it put it back on my radar on something I need to read. And I might be reading that shortly since I am quarantined in the house. And since I'm one of, uh, uh, from all my previous health issues, I'm kind of one of those at risk people. I definitely can't go outside. So I have plenty of time to sit in the house and read, read, read. And I might need to finally read, read, read strangers in paradise story over next on the list. We have Catwoman and Batman submitted by Savant Society member Wesley Jones. I don't know how I feel about the whole Batman and Catwoman thing. I've never been too sold on it. Um, I know it's a thing during Tom King's run uh, on Batman. I don't know. Never, never been on my radar, but I know it's a thing and it's a thing for some people. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I just think I'm un. I'm indifferent to it because I haven't read enough of them interacting in that way. I do like their interaction in what was it? Um, the Telltale. If you guys haven't played it, uh, this is available. You can get this on the cheap now. Um, Telltale made a uh, game. It's on every platform. I think you can get it on PlayStation, Switch, um, Xbox. The Telltale Batman uh, original game. I really enjoyed the take they did. I played the first season of that. It's five episodes for uh, for season. They did a second season, but I look in the first season, their interaction there. That's the most I've bought it. But in the little I've read of their interaction in the comics over the years, I wasn't a fan. But I haven't read Tom King's run yet. 
I picked up most of those books digitally in the deluxe editions of the newer stuff of his whole run. I think it's four volumes that came out so far. I got all four. I need to start reading. And I think it leads up to right before the wedding debacle thing happened. Um, and I, so I need to read that stuff. Uh, but just as of this recording, I'm indifferent to it. I'm not hype about it. I don't see what the intrigue is, but maybe I just need the right thing. But I did like it in that Telltale game, um, the the, uh, the Telltale Batman game. I really enjoyed that first season or that first game, their interactions with one another in the game. But in the comics, not so much. Uh, and, you know, Batman Returns, it's cool, whatever. Again, just not my thing, them two together. And last but not least, probably the mother and father of all power relationships. You could say Sue Storm and Reed Richards. They are, I guess, one of the first power couples, if I guess you date it. I'm, um, uh, I don't know, but um, they're a true power couple. And I guess one of the first that we got in comics um i don't know what can you say sue storm is an amazing character their their um opposite kind of style attracts um but they're a long enduring couple through all a bunch of trials and tribulations they've made it through and they've evolved together um so they were one of the first ones that i thought of when i came up with this list that came to mind i mean i know some of you might be like what about um you know, Superman and uh, Lois Lane. Uh, I was thinking about where both were hero or hero-ish characters. Um, or Sue and Ralph D uh, Dibney. Thought about them as well. Um, but it was the whole gauntlet was thrown when my wife recommended this. She was like power couple. So I was getting the gist from her from what she was taught, thinking about the concept was heroes together. So that's why I kind of, it, this list skewed the way it did. But that's the list. Let me know what you guys think. You can reach out, hit me on, on social media at comic book savant on Instagram or Twitter. Um, you can also, if you haven't already, you could join the Facebook group, like I stated earlier, or, um, you can just email me. You can email me at, uh, comic book savant at gmail.com. Just make sure you, if you comment on any episode, and you want to send me an email, just make sure you list in a subject line, you know, comic book savant episode, blah, blah, blah. Uh, episode number so I know what episode you're talking about uh, when you shoot me an email or you can go to comicbooksavant.com and go to the contact us page so if you can't remember comicbooksavant at gmail.com you can always just go to the website and go to the contact us page you can email me from there and I'll get your message it'll get uh, sent to me from there as well and um, I always respond to all the emails I get from you guys so you can do that as well that's all I have for you guys for this episode. As always, I hope you guys are staying safe. Uh, make sure you hit me up on social media. As always, if you want to support the content that I'm creating, you can also hit up my, the Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash comic book savant. For as little as a dollar a month, if you contribute to the Patreon campaign, you can get access to not only these actual podcast episodes early, you get them about uh, three or so days early, uh, before they're released, um, you also get a whole um, Patreon exclusive podcast. I do a whole nother podcast called Comic Books of Our Extra um, that I do there. So you, you get more content. And since you're quarantined at home, why not contribute and help me make more great content and get more content for your for your dollar? Just as little as a dollar a month, like I said, gives you access to earlier release episodes of the main podcast and a whole nother podcast feed as well for a price of a dollar a month. I know things are tight for anyone, but if you take one less dollar and buy one less comic book and contribute to the Patreon, you get a whole bunch more entertainment. You get to hear my wonderful Dawson tones. I don't know if it's Dawson or not. I don't even know. I don't even know if y'all like my voice. I don't really care for my voice. I just do this stuff because you like it. If you tell me you didn't like it, I might stop because I think my voice is horrible. But that's beyond the point. Um, that's all I have for you guys for this episode. As always, I'm your host, James Harris. This is the Comic Books of Art Podcast. Until next time, stay safe, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care. <laughs>